All right, my name is Jeremy Davis, I'm Instructional Technology Coordinator in the Anaheim City School District. Uh, today I'll be talking about network security uh, that we learn, and, and really it's sort of the gigantic overview of security in general. Um, because when we talk about network security, we're talking about do our people feel secure when they're online? Do our parents feel secure that their students' private information is safe? Do our teachers feel secure that their emails that they're sending, whether personal or not, are safe within our, our domain as well? So. Uh, there's a huge piece that we're going to be talking about today. Four parts, physical, which is the hardware, software, per people that are affected, and then the actual policies we need to be involved in. First, starting off with the physical network itself. Okay, firewall, spam filters, your actual machines. Okay, you need to have a great working knowledge as CTO, not so much of what buttons to push and how to install it, but what you need in order to be safe, in order to secure your network. You know your wireless. Are you Aruba? Are you Meraki? Are you Cisco? Are you HP? Who do you use and why? Are you part of the bid process? Are you part of understanding the software behind it and understanding how to secure that network? What does the actual building look like that you put your network in? Old and busted, safe and secure. Old and busted. <laughs> okay, so the actual building that you put your things in, how, how secure is it? Do you have keypad entry? Can you track who's been coming and going? Is everything lifted off the floor? Do you have fire safety? Do you have a RAID backup somewhere? Okay, how hard is it to get in to the actual physical building where you store your things? Then we come to budget. Okay. Do you know your budget well enough to know to keep yourself up and running with a nice server farm, keep things nice and new? Or is the last time you did an upgrade when 10 megabytes cost $3,495? So you need to know as a budget person, as a CTO, we can't go to our CDO once every five years and say, well, by the way, I need another 500 grand to upgrade our network. You need to know, how, am I saving? Where is the budget coming from? Where can I use that money? Do, am I going out for a bond? Do I sit on the bond committee? Okay. Software, lots of parts and pieces here. Are you a Mac? Are you a PC? Are you a Linux? Are you all? And if so, how does that work and how does it play into your network security? Is it easy to secure some devices, harder to secure others? And do you have people that have the knowledge to do that? I gave myself, you know, 15, 30 seconds just to, just to brainstorm well, what about securing the actual student machines? And I was like, oh my gosh, never mind. Okay, too many words. Uh, cabinet, does cabinet have input? Does cabinet understand? Do we, do we have the knowledge to put our words and our technology words into the right kind of words for our teachers to understand, for the cabinet to understand? So lots to do here. Um, the Nessus scan I loved because I had never done anything like that. Um, network security is not something I typically am involved in. We ran a scan found out we had some problems, and they were all on our Barracuda box. So we called Barracuda, they fixed them the next day, ran a new scan, now we're good, boom, artifact, right, right into the portfolio. Because um, we, as CTOs, we need to make sure we're doing this. We need to make sure, and this was something that never even crossed my mind, that there was a process out there for free that could scan my network and show me the holes. So really appreciate that piece of software. And now move into the people. Okay, we got our IT guys, right? Okay, that's a lot of us. Okay, so have they been trained properly? Do they know what they're doing? Are they helping me secure my network? Or are they making it less secure because they need to be playing World of Warcraft at night? Okay. And then we've got all kinds of other folks. Administrators, human resources, fiscal. We are responsible for their data. They rely on us to keep their data safe. How many social security numbers do we have? How much payroll information do we have? Okay, and then principals and administrators, cabinet. They rely on us that they, don't, they shouldn't have to ask us, hey, is our network secure? That shouldn't be a question they ever have to ask us. And if they do, we should know the answer and we should know why it's secure. We should be able to communicate that. And there are teachers, our custodians, everybody else, office staff, they're all part of our networks. And they're all part of that security and they're all part of people who rely on us to make sure this stuff works. We have our parents in our community. Okay? I know as a parent of a student, his social security number is somewhere on the network at his school and it better be secure, and it better be hard to get to. Okay, if they have an IEP, okay, and there's personal information about that student and about the problems they might have, or, or extra help they might need, I don't want that floating out in the community, and we need to secure that. And last but not least, our actual students. Are they safe, and are they learning to be safe online? Because part of network security for us is teaching our students digital citizenship, and teaching them about cyberbullying and this kind of stuff, because if they start using, the reason they know how to use a pencil is because we started teaching them in kindergarten how to use the pencil. Whereas when they misbehave online, we're surprised.
surprised, even though we haven't been teaching them for kindergarten, how to behave properly online. It, online is just another tool of their learning. And as CTOs, we need to be pushing those kind of policies. We need to be a, a part of that educational piece as well. Then we come to the actual policies themselves. Staff use policies. Okay? Do you allow staff to bring their own computers on your network? And if so, do they look like this? And do you know how to get this thing on your network? Because once you say, yeah, go ahead and bring it, it's amazing the kind of stuff that they bring. Also, things that, fun things that staff can do is staff can get a proxy server going and try and run their NCAA brackets on your network and, call, and actually try and like grab a part of your server to do it so all their friends can be involved 24-7. That's what happened in our district. And it's fun when the biggest problems come from the inside, not the outside. Um, now you have student bodies, right? And you can't have body without BYOD, right? So if they're going to have BYOD, what are they going to bring in? Well, they're going to go buy these. Ananda, what is that? Okay, Ananda is like a $59 Android tablet that you've never seen. It has no security. It can't be upgraded past Android 2.2, so it doesn't really work with most of the security software. But as soon as you say, we're going to have BYOD, unless you have the right policies in place, this is what shows up. So we have to be thinking ahead and have the vision to say, you know what, these are the devices we're going to allow. Must be upgradable. Must have this version of the software in there before we allow them to BYOD. The pencil. Um, <coughs> when a child stabs another child with a pencil, okay, we don't take all the pencils away, right? So when a child gets on a website they shouldn't be getting on, what's the first reaction of the administration? Take the website away, lock it up. No, that's wrong. And we as CTOs need to help explain that, again, is discipline. If a child misbehaves online, you discipline the child, you don't lock down the network. So, and that's something that we have to get them to understand. Technology is just another tool we're going to use, and we have to teach the children appropriately. If not, they end up like this, and they end up like this online as well. Okay. Lastly, we need to know our policies on phones and flash drives. Can we confiscate them? Can we look at them? Are we breaking the law if we do this? And to bring it all together, what you need in your district. Oh, sorry. Uh, this is a screenshot of a fourth grader <coughs> hacking into our servers. Uh, it's my vice principal's desktop, and we made the fourth grader replicate what he had done with the Google Tracer. Uh, so he had actually gone ahead and crashed a couple of our servers uh, by getting onto a computer that somebody else had left open, one of our TAs left open. Lastly, you need Chris Lindo. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. You need a trainer. Okay? You need a very good trainer. Chris is a great trainer, so I throw him in there. You need a trainer to train all these people, because if not, they're just playing with toys, and they don't know exactly what they're doing. So training is important. Physical, software, people, and policies, and security is really just the tip of the iceberg. Thank you.